Industrial control panels play a large part in every aspect of your life. That screen that you're watching this video on was made on a manufacturing line. That glass that you're reaching for right now was also made on an automated process. Even that delicious organic food was touched by some type of manufacturing process. It has made people's lives better, expanding education to those who would not otherwise have it, helping the elderly live independently, and has raised so many out of starvation and poverty. Automation is a fascinating industry with so many aspects that it can be difficult to define just what it is because, with the right combination of components, the possibilities of what you can do are limitless. You can eliminate those dull, dirty, and dangerous jobs. You can build cars and trucks. You can operate oil and gas refineries to fuel them. You can assemble every accessory you could ever want for your car. You can analyze health trends, implement preventive measures to prevent long-term problems, and develop assistive technologies to help people adapt. And if you dream even bigger, automation can put a person on the moon, put a rover on Mars, and even send a probe into interstellar space. With everything that automation can do, it can leave you feeling that those gray boxes, or the industrial control panels, are impossible to ever understand. But the key is to understand what the components inside of them are capable of. And then, every automation project is just a matter of selecting the right components for your application. Let's have a look at a few of those components before we start going through our course. This is your Programmable Logic Controller, or PLC. This is the brains of the operation. This is where we're going to be writing our programs, either in ladder logic, function block diagram, or structured text. Now, not all PLCs use the same software. So in the case of your control logics and your compact logics PLC, that's going to be Studio 5000 Logics Designer, formerly known as RS Logics 5000. Now, if we were dealing with a Micro 800 PLC, that would be Connected Components Workbench. Our Siemens PLCs, those are going to be TIA Portal. But once you learn one of them, you'll find that you can transition to the other brands fairly easily. Now, the PLC is going to read inputs, run some type of program, and then update outputs, at least on the basic level. Examples of inputs on your PLC are going to be these push buttons, these selector switches. These are ways that we're going to interface with our operator so they can tell the machine what to do. Then we have sensors on the machine. Those are used to see where particular parts of the machine are or maybe the parts that it's manufacturing, see where they're at. And there are many different types and we'll learn about those later. But so it's going to take all of those inputs into the PLC, run some type of program, and then update outputs. Now examples of outputs on your PLC would be lights. We can use those to signal something to our operator. This VFD is also an output, so it's going to, oh, I said VFD. Well, what does VFD stand for? That is a variable frequency drive or an AC drive, some people call it. But what it's going to do is vary the AC frequency going to our three-phase motor. And the higher the frequency, the faster the motor is going to spin. Now, here's a really good example of different types of control. So if I just tell this drive, I want you to run 30 hertz. That's called open loop control. We're putting our faith that hopefully the motor hit 30 hertz. Now, simply by coupling this encoder to the front of it, which is another type of input, this right here can read the position, which then we can get speed out of. Now we can verify that that motor is actually running at the speed we want it. And that's called closed loop control. And you may have heard terms such as process control or PID. And we'll cover those in later courses. But we want to start with those basics, such as when I press this button, which is an input, it's going to run some type of program. And then it's going to turn on this out. Now, a little bit about wiring your buttons and your switches. They, some of them will wire down to your PLC. But in many modern machines, we're connecting them on some type of network. So in this case, we have three sensors and this encoder, and they're all being wired to a network called IO Link. This allows us to connect some sensors in one central location 
And then we can connect them over Ethernet to our PLC. I'm going to go ahead and spin this trainer around. Let's look at the back of it. On the back of our PLC trainer, here is our Ethernet switch. Now, this isn't that much different than the Ethernet switch you may have on your home network, but this is where we're going to collect all of those Ethernet devices, such as our PLC, our AC drive, our IO link, our HMIs, our motion controllers, and probably connect to some type of plant network. Over here on the right, we have some terminal blocks. And so here, these are ways that we can connect two wires together or maybe more than two wires together on industrial systems. And then here are a couple examples of relays. And we'll talk about all these components as you go through your courses. Through your course, you'll learn about all of these components in depth from wiring them to programming them to really how to integrate them in depth to make them do advanced processes. Make sure you bookmark the Getting Started Guide. It has the most common things that you'll need to refer back to, which does include this video. So next, let's go ahead and get started with our PLC programming software. Click here to follow me over there.